everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I am starting a brand new cosplay project and I am super excited about this because I have been wanting this dress for forever. Specifically, I think I've been wanting to own this dress since around 1997, I want to say, but I've been wanting to make this dress for forever as well and I've just been too afraid. So I am finally just like dealing with my chiffon fear and making Rose's swim dress from Titanic. So originally I was really determined that I was going to make this dress out of silk because this dress involves like ombre dip dyeing and silk is what takes ombre dip dyeing really really well and of course the original was also made out of silk. So I went through and I got some swatches from Dharma Trading and like looked through and you know decided which ones were the best and then added the fabric to my cart and saw that it was going to be like $340 for cosplay and I can't stomach that kind of price. So we are making this out of polyester. I actually went to Joann's and I got all of the fabrics for this from Joann's so these are things that you can actually find pretty easily and I have some swatches right here to show you. So I am making the like kind of base part of the dress, the underskirt and the base of the bodice that you actually don't see the base of the bodice, but you do see the underskirt out of this poly crepe back satin. So it is crepe on this side and it is satin on this side. To be honest, I'm not 100% positive which one I want as the outer side at the moment. Um, I am thinking that I want the crepe because I feel like the poly is just too shiny. And then I also just have poly chiffon. Um, I actually like that Joann's chiffon is kind of a heavier weight chiffon. Like the silk chiffon that I had gotten from Dharma Trading was actually a lot lighter than this. And honestly, I was looking for more like a Georgette just so I didn't hate myself completely because Georgette is just slightly heavier fabric than chiffon, but still has that sheer and I feel like this is that. So these are both from the Casa Collection at Joann's. I had a coupon for I think like 50% off so I think I wound up spending um, just north of a hundred dollars, somewhere between 100 and 120 dollars on all of the fabrics for this and that included 13 yards of chiffon and then I think I got five or six yards of this and I believe at this point that I have everything that I need for this project except the lace that is going to wind up going around the neckline. Thought I had some in my stash. Went through my stash yesterday. I don't have any so I will have to go back to Joanne's for that but that should be easy and relatively inexpensive just to find that little little bit of lace. These by the way I think I bought in the snow white color Part of me feels like maybe I should have gone slightly more ivory. I didn't want to go bright, bright white, so these are kind of that happy medium. But uh, yeah, I also, as you can see, have done a dye test on both of these. Before I determined that I could actually move ahead with this project in polyester fabrics, I wanted to, of course, do a dye test. Now, so far, I have only tested this colorway. This is Rit Dye More, so it's made for synthetic fabrics to be able to be dyed and this one I left in the pot too long because I forgot that it was in there. Whoops! So I am actually going to have to redo this dye test as well because this color came out too dark. I think it may have been in there for an hour. You're supposed to leave it in there for like a half hour. But again, I forgot that it was in the pot. And then this one, well, this was the deeper test, which also was crinkled. And then this one was like just under a half hour. I think it was actually 20 minutes and it was perfect. This is the exact shade of purple chiffon that I need for this project, which is really, really awesome. So again, I do still have to test the pink. Oh, this fabric is also going to be used for the waist sash. And for that one, it will be shiny side out because the sash looks shiny in all the pictures. Speaking of pictures, let's talk about kind of how I have been looking at all of this because all of the movie stills for this are pretty much terrible. To be fair, you know, the most of the time that Kate Winslet is wearing this dress in Titanic, she is just like running through the ship like crazy, whether it is wet or, you know, not wet. 
And so the movie stills are just not good. But this dress was actually auctioned off a few years ago. And so Heritage Auctions, I think is what it's called, they have some really nice pictures on their website. Now you do have to sign up for the auction site, which is annoying to be able to view the high-res versions. But basically what I did was I then took the high-res pictures and put them into like a, I think Google Docs, so that I could print them out even more magnified. And that way I have like every little bit of the dress and it's right at my fingertips in a pretty blown up manner. I do also have them saved on my phone, but I find that this really helps and I can go ahead and like write notes all over. So these are all of my notes that I've written yesterday. And that is things like what color each layer needs to be where on the layer um, or how the layer is finished. Like the fact that I didn't notice till I blew this up that there is actually tiny, sorry about my fingernail polish, but there's tiny lace trim right around the neckline. And then like how the hems are done. Like I actually went on one of these because I was trying to figure out the length of the different pieces. And so I actually kind of pencil drew in where these hems went and numbered them so that it was like one, two, three, four, because there are four layers of chiffon with the base layer underneath. And that's a lot of layers and they are all cut differently, or at least they have different lengths, I should say. Speaking of cutting, let's talk about the pattern for this project. So I am actually using Simplicity 0673 as my base. This is like the old school, old school pattern that is completely not available anymore. And thank you, Krista, for sending this to me because this has been super, super helpful. And to be honest, I was almost a little disappointed when she sent it to me and I realized it was the wrong size, but she's actually already sized this up for someone who seems to be pretty similar measurements to me. So like Krista, again, thank you. That was a very, very nice surprise when I opened the pattern. Uh, and so yeah, I don't actually have to do a ton of changes to the pattern because she has already done things like <laughs> added on more length. Um, I am going to do some other things because again, this pattern does only go to size 14. I'm more like a pattern size 24. So I am actually going to size this up. I have done a whole video on how to size up commercial patterns. So I will link that video up here and down below in the description so you can go check that out. But basically it just involves finding out what these measurements are between the pattern sizes and multiplying those by more. Not in every direction though, which is the problem with these types of patterns is that they tend to size up in every direction. So in some ways, actually, starting with size 14, my shoulders are not a size 24 commercial pattern shoulders. They're pretty narrow. So they're more like a size 16, 18 shoulder. So it will actually be kind of a little bit helpful to um, size up from the 14. So yeah, I've already done all of my math. I just need to now like, I think I'm going to put this either, I don't know if I'm going to do onto new paper first. I am definitely going to make mock-ups of this bodice. I'm going to be risky and not make mock-ups of the skirt because I don't like mocking up skirts it just feels like a waste of fabric. Now that said, I do want to talk about some of the changes that I have made to this pattern for the skirts. So first off, this skirt pattern, it is the same pattern piece for both front and back, but it is meant to be cut double on the back versus on the fold in the front. Now I have looked all over those close up pictures of this dress. There is no center back seam. There must be some sort of slit at the very top of the back because it is a back closing dress there is no center back seam. It's hard to find a seam, period, which makes me think that they are hidden on the sides and they're just a very, very delicate seam. Um, but I am going to put my seams on the sides for the under layers. The upper two layers actually don't have side seams at all because they're split in the back. They're not actually connected in the back. It's two pieces that go around the body so that you have like pieces like this and they don't actually come together in the back or in the front. 
but these are the underlayers. I am cutting everything on the fold and then I'm going to have the side seams. I'm extending it by the same amount that Krista extended it here and then I'm also in the back going to sweep it out further because this actually is meant to have a train. I'm also going to lengthen the pieces because of the train situation and a little bit just because I'm tall. And then the top piece I'm honestly I think just going to mess with the length. The width if anything might be too much. This dress is very very slim around with kind of all of the gathering to the back and I am going to attempt to do that though I do not know if that will work slash look good on my frame so I guess we shall see. The other adjustment that Krista had already made to this pattern is that the back is actually a V whereas this pattern wants it to not be a V so I'm going to keep that adjustment there. I am also for the kimono sleeve section this was just going to be way too short so I'm actually splicing it along the shoulder adding in like four inches of length sizing it up and then adding a little bit of length in the front like going down under the bust as well uh, but yeah the kimono sleeve is the one I'm kind of most worried about as far as the changes go because I'm making a lot of changes. So all of that being said, I need to go make some mock-ups of these bodice patterns and just see if they will work. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the mock-ups today and then I also want to do the dye test with the pink dye. Because poly dye does take like a half hour to do, dye tests just kind of take a long time which is a little annoying. But yeah, those are my goals for today. Oh, I guess I should mention, ideally I would love to finish this before costume college. That said, I don't think I'm going to and I do not want to stress myself out at this point. We have just under two weeks till I leave for costume college because today is actually already Thursday that I'm starting this project and I leave on Wednesday two weeks from now. So yeah and I would be wearing this if I finish it. I will be wearing this to the Queen Mary on the Thursday leading into costume college because we dressed in Titanic dresses to do that a few years ago like pre-pandemic and it was super super fun. If I don't finish this I'm just gonna wear the dress I wore last time which is the deck dress and that will be fine but I would love to try and I think now that I've figured out the patterning the real difficult part is going to be working with the chiffon both cutting it and also figuring out what I want to do for the hems because I don't know yet. So wish me luck I'm gonna go and get started. So I have the mock-up together for the bodice and also the kimono sleeve portion but as you might be able to tell I have a feeling this is not going to work. I'm going to try it on tomorrow but this looks so large on my dress form and also way lower than I had intended. I had intended for the V to meet above the top of my camisole so that I could still wear a camisole with it and that is not what this looks like on my dress form so hopefully it will look completely different on me but Here's where it is so far. I do have to say on the other hand that the kimono sleeve portion actually looks like it fits the dress form pretty well. So I was more worried about this one oddly enough than these, but I'm feeling a little bit the reverse now. So first off, I think I forgot to tell you yesterday, but I did actually do the dye test for the pink dye. So this is the chiffon and then this I tried to kind of do a little bit of ombre so I put the bottom of it in for longer than like up here and tried to kind of get that ombre effect as I was going and I think that it worked a little. It's not exactly the right pink like honestly I feel like hers is slightly more of an orange toned like a salmon pink um, but it is really close so I think that it will work and if I can go get maybe an orange dye maybe I can mix them a little bit and give that a try. This one dyed very quickly. This was like 10 minutes I think definitely not more than 15 minutes in the dye bath. This one the initial color that was that same length and then I put it in for the longer and it wound up doing about 25 to 30 minutes total to get that darker color. But yeah I think that is going to work. So now that brings us to the mock-up. It is not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be looking at it on the dress form. It is definitely too large but I think it's fixable. Uh, now one thing I accidentally cut this out which in hindsight works but I accidentally cut this out 
not on the fold. This was supposed to just be a fold right here. And so my plan then when I realized that was, okay, well I can make a really tiny seam allowance. So up the center back seam because I can't fit something with a center back opening. And so normally I think you've probably seen on this channel, if you've seen before, that I will switch things for the mock-up phase to a front opening as opposed to a back opening. So I mean, that works for this, but then again, it is too big. So I actually have a lot of room here. So I'm gonna have to do some tweaking the other thing is that the straps are way too long. I put on, I'm wearing just like the princess slip and my 19 teens corset. Because my corset is a red ticking fabric, I need at least the slip layer to be able to like try and make this not you know, sheer enough that my corset shows through the final dress because this is a white dress. So I'm wearing the undergarments that I will be wearing for this um, and I need them not to show. <laughs> so obviously I need my neckline to be high enough that it comes to there and right now where the straps are sitting very much does not. So yeah, I need to take the shoulder straps up significantly. Like I put way too much length and I think that that will also put the darts to where they're supposed to be. The one thing is that I am a little worried that that is then going to make down here actually a little too short. We're looking at like honestly not even below the bust if I pull it up that far. So I think either way I will need to add a little bit of length to like this section and just not have it in this section right here. But I can always just add a little bit on the bottom of that as well because I think that's really probably about what I need. Anyway, I'm gonna go look in the mirror and figure out what all changes I need to make to this to make it fit and then we'll go from there. So just so you can quickly see a few of the changes that I'm going to be making, this is how much I'm taking out of the strap. <laughs> like, oh my god, I think that's four inches total in length. It's also way too wide, it's falling off my shoulders, and because of that it's actually dragging it off my shoulder. So I think that the inner side is hopefully going to be okay, but I need to cut a whole chunk off of the outer side, both front and back. I also am going to take in the sides a little, so I have a little bit pinned out here, and then up here I can't a pin in there so I just did a little like pink mark but I think it's going to wind up taking an inch total out of the like width around so the width around is not actually that far off it's mostly the shoulder straps and I think that once I have the straps up where they're supposed to be that the back is going to fit okay but I might need to take a little bit more width out of the back as well so we'll see how that goes but I'm going to make all of these changes and we'll see how kind of mock-up 1.2 works. All right, we're much closer now. I took so much off of like so many places. This was cut off around the arm size. These were some of the shoulder straps. And then I did take in the sides, so I left the excess there for right now. But it was um, five eighths of an inch down at the bottom, I think, like times two or really times four, like all the way around, and then three eighths of an inch up at the top. Uh, I think the back is still large. So I do have a little bit pinned out here. I can't really reach the top of it to pin it, but I think I'm just gonna take an even amount out of both. And I think that will help because it's making the straps feel a little bit large, but I don't think that it's really that like the arm size are big. I think it's that the back is too big. And so, yeah, I think that by taking that in probably about an inch, like half inch on each side, that that should fix the just the little bit of strap largeness. I also am kind of thinking that I want to take a little dart here. This is all going to be completely covered over by like the kimono sleeve part so I can kind of take darts wherever I want and it won't really matter but so I've got the other little darts that are already in the pattern and then I think I'm going to take the darts here and again I am going to lengthen this. I don't have this pinned by the way because this was supposed to be on the fold I just kind of tried to meet them center and they actually work really well that way but I do want to lengthen this because just looking at everything, I feel like the skirt and the bodice meet about here-ish. So I do need to add, what, probably like an inch and a half around the bottom, an inch and then seam allowance. 
and I think that will work but I can do that kind of like going into the final. The final is going to be made out of the crepe back satin and it is also going to be lined with cotton. Obviously not this cotton because it's not long enough so I will just recut it probably out of some cotton satin because I just got a bunch of that from Joann's and yeah but let's see if we can just take that back in a little bit and if that will work. The shoulders may also still be a tiny bit wide but again I don't really want to take that in until probably the final and then I can see if it needs I mean I don't have seam allowance taken out and I think the arm size I'm guessing are probably just bound because the sleeve itself comes from the chiffon overlayer so once I finish fitting this then I can fit the kimono sleeve overlayer portion that will be made out of the chiffon but yeah let's just do these little tweaks and see if we can get it perfect all right, I took in the back, to be honest, I didn't even measure how much I took it in, but I just took it in straight up where I had pinned it before. And I think that not only is it fitting really well, but actually I'm really liking the slightly higher V of the back. It's not kind of risking showing my camisole or my slip, which is what I wanted. And then I was just measuring and looking around the bottom of this. And first off, if you look at the back of the dress, it actually goes up at the back. So I think that I need to V up the back just a little bit. And then it's really only the front around here that needs the extra length, because I feel like this length is actually perfect exactly where it is. Though I guess I should double check to make sure it'll still be perfect once the seam allowance comes out. But I am going to add on, I want this to be like three quarters of an inch longer. So I need one and a quarter inches after a seam allowance to add on to the front here. And then I'll taper it out to there, I think. Though again, I'm gonna double check just to make sure the seam allowance can come out of there. And then I'm gonna just V up the back just that tiny, tiny little bit so that it matches a little better with the shape here. So we again have an issue of way too large with the kimono sleeve. It is like the body is way out. I think you can see just how loose this is. The sleeve is really long and loose. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take up slash in a lot because like this bit right here, I mean, I do have the seam allowances kind of as part of the pattern already, but this bit right here should be hitting about there-ish. And frankly, it should probably be sitting wider off my shoulder but I have such narrow shoulders that it's just a problem so we'll sit it as wide as it can like about there and this is just a droopy mess so I need to take the armpit basically in way a lot uh, the armpit on a pattern like this if you're not familiar with a kimono sleeve pattern it basically looks like that so really what I need to do I need to shorten the sleeve for one but then I need to just curve this in like that probably maybe even that much and that will get it tighter fitted to the body and just like more up in my armpit which is what I need from this and then I think that will hopefully work this is so much better look at that like definition I have this on inside out because that's how I fit things but the definition in there I mean it is fitting a lot better. I have to kind of hold this in place for it to really fit. And the other thing is that I can't quite fit the back, but I know that I need the shape of the back of the kimono sleeve portion to be like the same or more so than the shape of the under part of the bodice. So I think what I'm actually going to wind up doing is like pinning the shoulders together and then just taking them off and then treacing the under bodice portion to become the kimono sleeve portion. I believe it is just that the kimono sleeve back, like the straight up and down portion, I think it's too short, especially because I took out some of the width of the under bodice and therefore made the V shallower. I think that because of that, I'm about an inch, maybe inch and a half too short. And then because of that, where the V is going to is like down here instead of up here, if that makes sense. So basically this little crevice needs to be filled in as well. So it just needs to come up and have the V raised a little bit, I think, in the back of this. But yeah, otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the arm at this point or the sleeve at this point. It might still be a little bit long, but I can always adjust that in like the final chiffon layer because obviously the chiffon is also going to act differently than it is in the cotton. And this is just going to be one single layer of chiffon. So 
it's gonna be really really light and sheer and I'll just have to play with it in the actual fabric but in general I think we have other than filling in the V I think we have the right shape so once I have that filled in I will be able to cut that out in the chiffon and I have bodice pieces Although I guess one other note really quickly, since I am extending the bodice by a little bit underneath here, I do also need to do that to the kimono sleeve portion as well, because right now they're matching exactly. I was actually quite a bit closer on it than I realized. It was just this little bit of a wedge here and then a little bit more length here, but less length down at the bottom. And then I have to curve it up into that upwards V. And yeah, that'll be it for those changes there. So I've actually just gone and tweaked a few things because I realized that the underarm seams were not at all lined up between the two layers and it was probably pretty important that they ought to be lined up. So I went and did that, which resulted in a lot of different adjusting. But basically I now have this on again and I think you can see this fold going on right here. So I realized that I need to be able to show just like a little bit of lace, which that means that this fold is going to be the cut edge and I mean there's not really like seam allowance on the chiffon there is a tiny bit of seam allowance for like binding finishing on the under layer so hopefully that will work and I don't need to bring it back even more but you're supposed to be able to see just a little bit of lace coming down on the under layer right here and then coming across and so I'm going to take that out all the way this way and then the back is actually less lined up than I kind of thought but I now have it all pinned in place so I can again just kind of transfer the under layer dimensions onto the over layer kimono sleeve dimensions how that's supposed to be in the back and I think at that point then it will work. So this right here is what the kimono sleeve bodice pattern is going to wind up looking like with this kind of extension here coming from the lower under bodice pattern and I'm going to take a risk and if you notice I have this laid out on my grid paper on the bias. I did not do the mock-up on the bias. I probably should have but the original pattern showed it on the straight of grain like along this way but I know that kimono sleeve patterns are normally biased like on the top of the sleeve and I was noticing a little bit of rippling right around here at the top of the shoulder because it was on the straight grain and it just couldn't come down to my shoulder and like stretch down that way so I'm going to try cutting this piece on the bias I've got lots of chiffon I think so I can hopefully always recut it if I need to but yeah this is the final piece with a little bit of extension added right here you can see 5 8 inch down meeting up to that here and that is because of the bodice extension that I did on the under bodice. So I'm having a little dilemma right now because I have already actually cut out the skirt pieces that are like the main skirt pattern. So there's two layers of chiffon skirt pieces here, the one layer of the crepe back satin and backs and fronts. And now I have to cut out the over layers. So there's two layers that I was going to use like this sort of pattern for here. My issue is I've cut the other pieces on the fold of the chiffon because as we all know, chiffon is very squirrely. And in doing this, I first started with a ripped edge. You can see I'm not quite lined up here, but I first started with a ripped edge when I went to go cut the first piece. And then I've been lining up the edge here and down here, I've been trying to keep this pretty much even with the edge of the tail table, meaning that I have like two straight edges, hopefully, and everything else has just been smooth. But as you can probably see, this piece is enormous. It is not one that can be cut flat because it is very different on this side here, which is the center back versus this side, which is the front, but not quite center front because it doesn't quite go to the center front. So... I'm trying to decide whether it's worth it to use this pattern right here and have to figure out where I can cut this that like wouldn't be folded over flat because basically where I normally cut big pieces like this is the living room floor but the living room carpet is going to like grab at the single layer of chiffon and it's going to make it totally off base whereas I kind of have a control keeping it on this table. So yeah, I'm torn on how to cut this piece or if I want to follow this pattern diagram for this piece. I do know that it has to be longer in the back than it does in the front. This one specifically has a bias back so that it winds up getting larger down at the bottom than it is at the top, which I think is kind of a nice idea, though I don't know if it's necessary, but I just can't figure out how to cut this.
So I think I've hopefully figured out a solution. Basically, I took this pattern piece and I folded it just a little bit over from where the green line is right here. So I made this fold right here, folded it. And what that did was it made the like long half that's hanging down here actually go out to here on the pattern. And so I drew in those lines there, but then I also drew in the lines for this half right here, which is very, very different. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut around the like outermost set of lines. And then on the top layer only, I am going to cut on the inner set of lines. The only place where that is going to differentiate is right up here where this little bit sticks over. So I will have to be careful to make sure I'm cutting the right layer with that little corner. But otherwise, hopefully that will work. And then of course I have to do, uh, oh God, I have to do basically four more of these because it's gonna be two on each side for each layer. I'm attempting to do all of my chiffon seams with French seams. So if you're not familiar with French seams, it basically means that the seam allowance gets like trapped inside. So you wind up doing two rows of stitching, but you don't see any edges whatsoever. In other words, the finished product looks like this, where you have kind of this thicker seam allowance area inside because it's like, what, I guess four layers or something like that, but it is fully encased and you don't see any surging. Now, why am I doing this on here? I have no idea, but I felt like it was going to look less obtrusive than surging and maybe cleaner. So hopefully these extra steps are worth it. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done. Basically, we have our first stitch here, which is approximately a quarter of an inch from the edge. If you wind up making it any larger than a quarter inch, go ahead and after this step, go ahead and cut it down to a quarter inch because you want it nice and nice and small. And then over here, I am still going to clip this curve. So I'm going to do four little clips right into it there. And then I'm going to press this so that it's like backwards and encased in basically kind of like this. Let me show you what that looks like. So what you are seeing now is actually the inside, the wrong side of the fabric. And this seam has now been pressed to basically the outside. However, we are going to do a little line of stitching right on the outside of this. So about like three eighths inch from the very edge here. We're gonna do that stitching and then we're gonna press it again, turn it around again so that it's right sides facing out. And this will be its own fully little encased in seam on the inside. So this is what it looks like on the inside. And then like I showed you before, this is what it looks like when you turn it right sides out. So the other thing that I've been working on besides the flat felled seams is that I have been doing narrow, like the rolled hem on the machine type hems on the sides of the two top panels. So those are the two panels that like they don't get joined together. They are just two panels that go like this two layers worth of panels, so four panels total. Now that said, I thought that it was going decently. I won't say great because honestly, like the machine, and I don't know if it's my foot or what, but it does not do the best job at rolled hems. Like sometimes it just loses the hem. One trick that I have at least for getting started is that you want to do like a few stitches without trying to get it into the foot, basically so that you can get a thread to hold on to and like guide it through the foot. It's still a pain, but it's less of a pain. It's actually doable as opposed to like chiffon, otherwise will not go into the foot. But the, yes, Dora? I hope you can hear Dora. She's upset about this too. I was definitely feeling this way last night when I was doing this. I wound up somehow, despite checking, I wound up hemming the second to top layer panels. Um, I hemmed them like both on the same side, meaning that they have now both become like the same side of panel. Or in other words, that one side is hemmed correctly and the other side, the hem is turned to the outside, which of course is not supposed to happen. So now I am going back and forth in my head debating about, do I just like hope no one notices? <laughs> do I dye it and then see, does it look even worse? And then redo it if it does look even worse. Cause like, I have to admit, I mean, the reason why I didn't notice it in the first place, I think was because it is fairly imperceptible when you look at like the wrong side here versus like the right side here, 
it's pretty imperceptible which one is which. Hopefully that wasn't blurry for you, by the way. So yeah, I'm trying to decide whether to like just live with it, whatever, or do I just go ahead and cut off the tiny narrow hem that I've already done on one panel and redo it the opposite direction. I'm not going to unpick that because unpicking this on chiffon it, it would just be an absolute nightmare. It would be better to just cut it off and have the panel be a little bit narrower. Uh, but I am already like running out of time on this project. And so that would be a good like 20 minutes at least wasted 20 to 30 minutes because that's how long it takes to do a machine hem on two sides of one panel. It's so ridiculous. So yeah, on that happy note, that is actually going to be the end of this video because I am coming to you here now on Monday, which means it's next week's video. So I'm going to end this video here. Hopefully you've been enjoying this project so far. I do feel like I got a fair amount done this week. It's just that the deadline is looming closer and closer and closer. And my week and a half leading up to when I leave to costume college at this point is very, very busy. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Keep me in your thoughts. Of course, by the time that you see this video, I will only have like two days left. So I sure hope by then that I've basically finished this dress. Anyway, if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have linked to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can join my YouTube channel channel memberships or leave me a super thanks right here on YouTube right below the video. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons Mirage, Laura, Jean, and Janelle. Thank you all so so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing! <laughs>